The 2.7 liter EcoBoost found in the Ford F-150 has a two-piece engine block. And the question is, does that two-piece engine block design make the engine weaker or stronger? I want to talk about this today because I've been doing a ton of research on the 2.7. And I did a video recently talking about the engine block saying that it's probably not really built like a diesel just because it has compacted graphite iron. You know, I pointed to the fact that it has a two-piece engine block, so it kind of made me question the strength of the engine a little bit. But in doing research, I found some very interesting things out about this engine. So the two-piece engine block essentially means that the middle of the engine's iron, the heads are aluminum with water-cooled exhaust manifolds, water-cooled integrated exhaust manifolds in the heads. But I don't think being two-piece makes the engine any weaker. The reason I say that is the fact that the midsection that holds the pistons also holds the connecting rods and the crankshaft. So essentially you have a compacted graphite iron block which holds your crankshafts, which has fractured main bearing caps, which is probably the strongest that you can get out there is essentially fractured from the block so when they when if you were to take off the main bearing cap you'd find the surface is rough and they actually fit together like a puzzle where each little particle actually fits with the block and the cap so it's extremely strong and it's one of the most reliable cutting edge ways of uh doing any kind of connecting rod or in this case the uh the crankshaft caps so that's a pretty pretty interesting process there and that's a really good thing to have in your engine block now the fact that the crankshaft is also held by the compacted graphite iron and the cylinders are part of the compacted graphite iron the pistons are in the block this engine being compacted graphite iron in the middle is no weaker than any other iron engine now, I kind of felt like they used this compacted graphite iron in a sparing way to make it just lighter. And they probably did at some amount, but I'm sure it has enough to be uh, to be a strong. Now, now, the lower end of this engine, the lower section, is just an aluminum girdle that goes on the bottom. And that's not anything new. I've seen other engines with that on the bottom of it. So it's not like... When they say a two-piece engine, it's not like the crankshaft is actually in the bottom and then the cylinders are up, are up top and separate pieces of uh, material. The crankshaft is in the same material that the cylinders are in. So I think this is a really strong engine design, actually. Now, with the aluminum girdle on the bottom, it probably adds just a ton of rigidity. Aluminum doesn't flex. So that's a good, uh, good uh, engine design. But yeah, this is a strong engine design, maybe even stronger than the 3.5 EcoBoost. It's hard to say. It's hard to know without like taking both of these engines to their maximum, maybe on a dyno and just taking them to failure of the block. On either engine, it's probably hard to uh, get the block to reach failure of the block. You'd probably have a um, connecting rod issue or something like that before you had a before you had a failure of the block. Um, I've no. I, I've been to a uh, engine performance shop and they t we talked a little bit about like reaching the, f the failure point of the 5.0. The block, I think, fails at like 900 horse horsepower or something like that with the 5.0, maybe a thousand. But um, this is a strong design. Two piece engine block kind of made me feel like it wasn't as strong for a while as I've as I've done more research. It's not like a North Star engine where the crankshaft is in a different part of metal and then the cylinders are in a different part. You know, that's kind of how this engine made me think. But no, this is a iron. The The rotating assembly is held by compacted graphite iron. The, the uh, crankshaft, the um, cylinders, the pistons, all that's in compacted graphite iron. And thinking about the North, thinking about the North Star, the problem that that engine had, the early models, the the aluminum was too soft, and the the bolts that hold the heads 
the head studs were pulling out of the aluminum because the aluminum was too soft. So if the engine got hot, the heads, the head bolts would pull from, they didn't have enough threads. So in later models, they added more threads and then they added, I think they had to update it twice where they added threads and then they even, and even had to add more threads and they finally corrected the issue. Then they discontinued that engine. But in this case, the block being iron, that's a non-issue. And they've actually put in the work. I think engines nowadays, when you look at the issues that they had in the 90s if they tried, as they tried to reach these new heights, you saw these weird issues in the early uh, 90s, like the North Stars, where you'd have, you know, head bolts pulling out of the block. You just don't see that nowadays as much. And, you know, being that this was a two-piece design, I thought this might have been like a crazy, like, weird, you know, setup where the crankshaft was in a different section of metal. And the... No, the actual business end of this engine is all compacted graphite. Your crankshaft is held by the by the compacted graphite as long as, as well as the uh, pistons, the connecting rods, the oil cooling jets as well. And then on top of that, it does have a rather complicated front cover that holds your water pump and your oil filter housing. It has some of the uh, it has oil pressure going through it. Obviously, as you see, the oil filter housing is there, and it has some of the uh, timing components on the that. Uh, as far as the VCTs are concerned, on the front cover. So that's complicated stuff. The front cover situation is very complicated. But and it also looks like it holds the uh, intercooler and all, who, all kinds of stuff. Not, uh, not necessarily the intercooler, but the water to air. Which one is it? It holds the EGR for sure. But this engine, you know, when it comes to the front cover... The front cover is actually actually structural as well and you know being a two-piece engine doesn't make it any weaker you know it's still an iron engine it just has a aluminum girdle on the bottom and it has aluminum heads water-cooled exhaust but 400 foot-pounds of torque 325 horsepower uh, pulls like a V8, has torque curve, kind of similar to a V8, extremely efficient engine, gets 18 in a city, can get more than that if you try, uh, can get 20 plus on the highway, just a phenomenal drivetrain. This truck has a 10 speed, but uh, comment below and tell me what you think about this uh, engine, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. This is DS Trucks, my name is Sean, where we run nothing but the best. That's it for the video. Over and out. See you in the next one.